Hey guys, it's Whitey's Worker Workshop with episode 24 of the Gonk Build number two. This one is gonna get into uh, painting, weathering, uh, building the stand and doing all that. Uh, the heating elements, the torture device. Uh, a couple greeblies here and there. Let's get into it. Hey, we start off here where I'm adding holes for the PVC so I could connect it to. I intentionally left this part in just to show you that I was going to have it so you could split the two apart by disconnecting that. I seen these at the store and I just had to put them in. I figured that the owners would have to lift them up somehow. Not everybody has a suction tube like the Jawas do. You can really tell here in this part that I am not a, a carpenter. I just play one on TV. But I pretty much built it and put it together how I thought it should uh, quickly. And just played around. Made two exactly the same and it worked out. Sign up, up. Don't forget to check out the bloopers at the end. In this part, I rounded off all the edges. So now I was pretty much buttoning up all the wood and preparing it for sanding. I clamped it together and then used brad nails to hold it. So I designed this torture stand so that way it would look like, like the gonk could actually walk up into it and be clamped. Here I am sanding the gonk uh, to make sure it will accept the paint. Luke, I am your dancing father. I put the initial coat of hammered rust-oleum. I'm using a satin Oxford blue. I kind of goofed up here. I reused an old paintbrush that already had the masking fluid on it. And I didn't like how it came out. Oh yeah, I like the color, man. Always use a filter on your fan. It's pretty dry, so I'm gonna take off the layer and I'll show you how easy it is with that uh, masking stuff. You can see that right there. Dig in a little bit. Just kinda use your fingerprints to, to kinda just grab it and rub it. Rubbing it'll come right off for you. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. So I spray painted with a couple different layers. I did um see I did the primer, the primer filler first. And then I did uh, it was like a tan color. Same one I did the Millennium Falcon pads with. I had a bunch of that left. Uh, I'll put what it is down below where I'll put 
put it over here, a picture of it. Um, then I did a black spray paint, Walmart dollar special spray paint, just anything to kind of spritz the black. Then I had another brown one too. I'll put that, a picture of that one over here too. I spray painted these guys with a gloss black because I just had it laying around. So these are for the gunk's feet. I thought these were a lot nicer than the exhaust vents, the aluminum exhaust vents. These look a lot nicer. The other ones look kind of cheesy. Cheesy and like 1960 sci-fi, <laughs> which I wasn't looking for. These look a lot better. So I have this rub and buff. It's getting down the nitty gritty with this one, but this is the wax metallic finish. I'm just gonna get some on my my finger here. I'm gonna rub it around. I'm trying to only go this way because I don't want to get any of the rub and buff down inside. That'll that'll take away from my, my look. There, how's that? What's the difference? What do you think? Oh yeah, I like it. And now we will paint the gunk feet for the third time. So now I started getting creative with the weathering. I tried using a, a roller. It did work to kind of soap up a lot of the paint, but I ended up going back to the paintbrush. There was too many nooks and crannies. This here is a, a spray can lid with a Heinz ketchup lid inside. And uh, that's a 3D printed something or other agreeably. It might be for um, Han Solo's pistol, the front, or the Mandalorian. I don't know, one of them pistols, I think. But I think it looked good all together. Droid recharge port, I guess. <laughs> oh, what do you think? I had to make the stand bigger, wider, so I could get the look I was looking for. If you notice in this shot, there's no more PVC disconnect. I took it out. So it was either I was able to open up the whole gonk or make it look better. I chose to make it look better. I think I could still use it as a garbage can, but I was worried about you know, people putting too much stuff in there, like sticky stuff, soda, junk like that. So, I don't know. We'll see. So here I am just kind of throwing this together to make it look like covers over top, like a guard. And have it fit in with the rest of the stand.
Okay, so this is going to be the controls for the torture chamber, but it's pretty much all EMT connections, utility boxes. I kind of just uh, put it all together here. These are straights. These are the, the 90s. But I have it coming through here for uh, like extra support. See right now I could pretty much uh, let it go. It'll it'll kind of bump up against the next guys here. So which kind of worked out. Yeah, I planned that. I meant I planned that. <laughs> it feels good. It, it I'm sure it'll wear in a little bit, but um, I showed you in the video where I kind of hollowed these guys out. Um, I didn't cut every every piece that you see, but I kind of just have that for for show, you know. And I'm gonna paint these guys up. I did get um, this is the wire loom, but I didn't like that it has you know that it's cut through. So I put it on and I taped it with a uh, little electrical tape. But here I'll show you what. What these screw couplings look like when they're hollowed out so this is meant to to splice two two conduits together uh, let me see if i yes yeah, so i have this one and i kind of put it in and it only goes so far same thing with with the other side so what i did was i just hollowed it out that way i could just slip it slip all this stuff up through just to give it the look that I wanted. So well, then I got this uh, PVC and that was one inch PVC to slip right over. So I first started with a pipe bender and that didn't go so well. Uh, notice I cut it off there and so I just started um, heating it up to try and get it to bend right and I'm like okay I have this little thing to make it a little rounder and not bend as much one thing I forgot to mention in the video was uh, the type of lights I used but I, I tried everything I had rope lights I had uh, L wire lights I had white lights Christmas lights I tried all kinds just couldn't get the right look so I ended up with the uh, rope lights 600 per strand per 15 feet so I just doubled it up and shoved it in there here I'm kind of putting the whole thing together the whole heating element portion with the lights took a while to get the right look and to get it sturdy enough you see me playing and every time you look at it it's rather different and there were reasons for that because I didn't want it to fall apart uh, immediately so then once I had a certain look I was trying to get it so all the wires were hiding stuff like that uh, but I used up uh, Half inch packs with all half inch fittings here. Uh, it's not for, for sewer, it's the potable water stuff. I have everything kind of hidden, like as far as the lights. They end here and swoop around. And they come through here. And they come back around. And you can see part of it right there, um, which I'll probably gonna tape up or something so you can't see it that's why I use blue on this side and in this side I, I just used packs with a, a shark bite fitting probably too expensive of a fitting for this but <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do to make it look good you know what I'm saying just kind of threw parts together to try and get my interpretation of the um, the torture device so this all stuff here was found in the electrical aisle in Lowe's um, and the rest was found in the uh, sewer slash I guess toilet area I'm a guy that doesn't like to finish things until I know 
Yeah, I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I heated this kind of area up with uh, my heat gun, and then I kind of just placed it in the round part of this guy to try and get a nice curve. It's not perfect. You gotta watch. Like this side's kind of kind of odd, oddly shaped. You might be able to tell in the video a little bit. Like this one, this one came out really good, but it's still not perfect, perfect. I don't know, but it works for when I want. When I want. I needed like 12 inch for the feet, the gonk feet. This was kind of put in for support to hold everything together. I cut these little laser, laser cut things here just to kind of, to make it look like it's a clamp, you know, instead of having this. Just kind of put these over it. To kind of make it look like it's a, it's clamped up against the gonk, you know. So I got a little scotch brite here and I'm able to get most of the um, the lettering off so that you won't see it as much. But I'm going to try touching it up with um, like a little bit of orange, a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit of red, maybe a little bit of black. I'm going to try and make it come out more. It's pretty bright over there and like you can see on my face, it's pretty bright. So I'm hoping to just spritz it. I might have overdid a little bit with the spray paint. Just because I was trying to uh, get rid of the whole, um, hey, this is Pex with light inside of it <laughs> look. So I was trying to get it to make it look like a heating element of some sort. Um, trying to get it to make, yeah, make it look right. And that's what came out of it. This bar here, I kind of thought that everything was too plain, so I used the L wire. Uh, and this here, I kind of scratched something and it worked out. I thought it gave it a better look. It actually looks like a heating element now. Kind of. Alright guys, hope you liked that video. 
Uh, come back next time when we do. I think it's going to be the laser cut Millennium Falcon floor. Laser etched grating. Uh, either that or maybe the, the sliding wall. Mural. Or just something totally random off the cuff. I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll find out on the next one. <laughs> Peace! <laughs>